Hello everybody, Greg is here. Uh, it has been a while since the last time I recorded something, but it's better later than never. So today I want to discuss a little bit uh, about some interesting bonding situation in a new publication in JAX. Those of you who studied chemistry at some point of your life probably heard that a chemical bond is usually made of two electrons. So you have one atom comes with one electron, another one in, a, in another electron, and those electrons make this chemical bond by hybridization. So in this case, you have a water molecule, right? You have hydrogen and oxygen. So oxygen has uh, two valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. So we have two hydrogen-oxygen bond and making the water molecule happen. How it's uh, not, of course, how it looks in real life. In the real life, uh, those two electrons make a sort of cloud, right? And this cloud basically would that what holds the atoms together. But if electrons make a cloud, so in theory, you can make a bond from any number of electrons. And not only in theory, but also in practice. L less famous, but still relatively common example is three center two electron bonds. So here we have two center two electrons, center one, center two. And here, for example, in dimer of uh, boron, so bo boron with three hydrogens, a very stable molecule forms by making those bridge bonds. So there's two electrons, one from hydrogen, one from boron, but three centers, one, two, three. And the same situation is on the other side of the molecule. So this is called three center two electron bonds. Again, very common situation and many, many molecules. A very rare example is when there is two centers but only one electron but it was published here are the examples of a few examples that are known of two center one electron bonds yes when you have one unpaired electron this molecule is usually paramagnetic this really one electron holds two atoms together however in all examples that were published of such two center one electron bonds those bonds were sort of supported they were sort of, they were kind of already in the frame so if you take for example this molecule right those two boron atoms yes they have one electron between them but imagine if this bond here between the two benzenes do not exist Will those atoms still make a bond between them? Will it be strong enough to hold them together? That's uncertain. I, I would say no. I would say that's the only way such bond can exist. Only if the two atoms with one electron between them are brought together, like in this case, like in this case, also here, same situation. So they just brought together by the molecular structure. And then, okay, we're already here, let's make a bond. And just recently, a couple of months ago, there was a publication in the Journal of American Chemical Society that proves that such bonds of two centers and one electron can exist without any support. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Yeah, that's the molecule that was isolated, crystallized, identified, fully uh, analyzed. It was synthesized by taking a divalent tin compound and reducing it with one electron from potassium graphite. If we want to put some uh, more details to this reaction, what happens is that the divalent tin compound, it's called stanilin, by the way, gets one electron from the potassium here. Yeah, so it becomes an ion radical and this radical reacts with another molecule of the stanilin and makes this single bond with one electron as simple as that there is an empty orbital here and this electron comes into this empty orbital and makes a bond and uh, that was proven that that's indeed the structure by, by a few methods so that's the x-ray structure so we have a very long bond, which shows that it's not a regular bond, because if the bond between the two tin atoms made of two electrons, it would be much shorter. So that's the longest single bond that is known for tin with tin. Also, we have a quantum mechanical calculations that show that only one electron is actually located between the atoms in this. This is the cloud that it makes. And also the molecule is paramagnetic. It has the uh, electron paramagnetic uh, resonance signal, which again corresponds to what is expected for such a molecule. Well, here you can say, yeah, okay, that happens, but probably this bond is weak. So it's probably something like exotic, not, we could not expect it in any other place. And here's the, uh, the next surprise, for me at least, 
by calculation, the energy between of this bond is huge. Is actually like corresponds to a bond which is a normal bond of made of two electrons, not by one electron. So yeah, it's 32 kilocalories per mole in THF. If you make it in a gas state, it's even over 40 kilocalories per mole. That's 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 a strong bond. So we can expect to see such bonds in other occasions probably as well. And here's a, a some reactivity that actually shows that uh, this bond can be broken upon the reaction with uh, some molecules. So in uh, both reactions, the, this bond is broken and the staniline is released, but the radical reacts in this case with this tempo radical, okay, making the tin oxygen bond, the potassium stays. And in this case, again, it reacts with the oxygen. So this radical carbon centered radical forms with stanilin attached to oxygen and it dimerizes. Those reactions also prove that this is indeed the structure. Very unusual. I would try to publish it in something even bigger than JAX. One more thing why this uh, publication attracted my attention. So basically, yeah, this reaction is from the family of reactions of divalent compounds with free radicals. And uh, that's the reaction that you would expect in such cases that one, the electron from the free radical makes a bond by interacting with one, one of the electrons of the divalent compound. The group I was working in 20 years ago, they studied a full spectrum of such reactions. What I mean by full spectrum? So yeah, we had uh, we studied uh, divalent uh, compounds uh, of the carbon group. So it's the like carbene, the xyliline, and the germylene, and we thought that we covered this field completely. So we had uh, in one case a di divalent compound interacting with the radical by no and without touching this the electron. That was of course when uh, the uh, the reaction happened by while keeping the unpaired electron on the element like in this case. Now in another case the electron became delocalized to the backbone of the, of the molecule like in this case. In some other cases with germanium here for example we had uh, also charge separation the plus remained on germanium and the minus with the unpaired electron went farther to the backbone. In the last case, again with carbon, this charge separation was even bigger. However, we never, <laughs> in our wildest dreams, we couldn't imagine that such a reaction can happen in a way that this radical reacts with the element, keeping the two electrons intact. So uh, I think at least this story is also closed by this publication but many new stories perhaps will emerge. Yeah, so that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Uh, thanks for your attention. See you next time. Please support Ukraine and uh, support the struggles of Israeli citizens who try to bring prisoners home from the Hamas jail. Have a good day.